right, in terms of what's coming down the pike this week and next week, and I can get two chapters in before break, but I decided one is plenty. So that'll allow us more time to review for this semester exam, which we'll talk about when it gets closer. In regard to this week, we're going to introduce the mall. This is a critically important chapter for the rest of the year. It's very mathy. So those of you who are good at like Algebra 1, just basic type conversions, I think you will be extremely happy. If you're struggling in Algebra 2 right now, don't worry because this is very basic math. So you're not going to have any trouble with it. And we've already done some of it this year. So it's just a, it's the factor label method. It's very easy. So this week we'll be introducing the very basics up through percent composition of a hydrate. And then I think we'll quiz Monday and we probably can get the lab started as well for Monday and Tuesday. And then we'll get into empirical and molecular formula toward the end of next week. And I'm looking to test out the following week. And then we'll have the remainder of that week for um, semester exam review. And I'll have a review sheet for you and get you ready for your semester exam. All right? So that's what's coming. And we are going to introduce the mall today. I had reminded you twice to print out your notes, so I hope you have them. If you don't, if you have a piece of paper, you can scribble down the problems and print your notes later today. We're going to first introduce the mole and Avogadro's number. The mole is critically important for chemistry. We know that atoms are very, very small, and we don't want to count with numbers that are to the 23rd power. And so chemists have devised a way that is much easier to work with quantities, and that is introducing the mole. So the mole is an amount of substance. It's going to allow chemists to relate different substances with one another. And you can think about the mole very similarly to the way that you think about a dozen. If I told you that there were a dozen kids absent today, how many kids would be absent? Twelve. If you decide to eat 12 cookies, you're probably going to have a stomach ache, but that would be a dozen. And if you have a dozen pencils in your backpack, you would have 12. And if there are a dozen boys in here, there would be 12 boys. So a dozen is always 12, and a mole is always a certain amount of substance. And that's what we're going to relate here. I thought this was one of the very interesting videos that really illustrates what a mole is. And so we're going to take a look at this brief video on the mole.
For example, if you have a room with many gases, zero degree Celsius, and at a pressure of one atmosphere, then you have precisely 602 sextillion gas particles. That is, you have 6 to 0.30 of that of particles of gas in the container. Or in scientific notation, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particle. This example is a little misleading because gases take up a lot of space due to the high kinetic energy of gas particles, and at least these thinking atoms are bigger than they really are. Instead, think of water molecules. If you pour 18.01 grams of water into a glass, which is 18.01 milliliters, which is like three and a half teaspoons of water, you'll have 602 sextillion molecules of water. Since Lorenzo Romano, uh, never mind. Avogadro was the first one to come up with this idea. Scientists named the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd after him. It's simply known as Avogadro's number. Now, back to the mole. Not that mole. This mole. Yep, this number has a second name. The mole. Chemists use the term mole to refer to the quantities that are at the magnitude of 602 sextillion. This is known as a molar quantity. Atoms and molecules are so small that chemists have bundled them into groups called moles. Moles are hard for students to understand because they have a hard time picturing the size of a mole, or at 602 sextillion. It's just too big to wrap our brains around. Remember our 18.01 milliliters of water? Well, that's a mole of water. But how much is that? Exactly what does 602 sextillion look like? Maybe this will help. Exchange the water particles for donuts. If you had a mole of donuts, it would cover the entire Earth to a depth of 8 kilometers, which is about 5 miles. You really need a lot of coffee for that. If you had a mole of basketball, you could create a new planet the size of the Earth. You could feed the mole of pennies on the day you were born and spent a million dollars a second until the day you died at the age of 100, you would still have more than 99.99% of your money in the bank. Okay, now we fully have an idea how large the mole is. So how do we use it? You might be surprised to know that chemists use it the same way you use pounds to buy grapes, jelly, meat, or eggs. When you go to the grocery store, you don't go over to the deli counter and ask for 42 slices of salami. You buy your salami by the pound. When you buy your eggs, you buy a dozen eggs. When you hear the word dozen, you probably think of the number 12. We also know that a pair is 2, a baker's dozen is 14, a gross is 144, and a ream of paper is... Anybody? A ream is 500. Well, a mole is really the same thing. For a chemist, a mole conjures up the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Not a pleasant little animal. The only difference is that the other quantities are more familiar to us. So there you have it. The story of the mole. Avogadro, basketball, and how to buy salami at the grocery store. Question? Stretching? So a mole is always 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, molecules, particles. And we'll talk about which unit you should use based on the type of substance that you have. And this will become a little clearer tomorrow when we introduce some of the other concepts. But hopefully you got a basis for what a mole is and why it's needed. What you will also see is the link between a mole and mass based on the fact that we use balances in the lab, we measure things out in grams. So we will need to be able to relate mass of a substance to moles of a substance, and we'll be taking a look at that as well. So it says a mole contains as many elementary entities as there are atoms in exactly 12 grams of C12. So C12, carbon, has an atomic number of 6, a mass number of 12. And in 12 grams, you can set carbon 12 as your standard. And we'll talk about these elementary entities. When I say elementary entities, you'll see that if you have an element from the periodic table, sulfur, carbon, iron, tin, doesn't matter, your elementary entity will be an atom. And that's what we'll talk about today. If you have a diatomic element like bromine, Br2, or iodine, I2, or nitrogen, N2, etc., 
or a covalent compound such as carbon dioxide, carbon tetrachloride, your elementary entity will be a molecule. We'll talk about those tomorrow. And if you have an ionic compound, then your elementary entity is a formula unit, or usually we say particle when we're dealing with Avogadro's constant. So we already said that atoms are very small. To assist in counting them, chemists have come up with a unit called the mole, and that will represent the elementary entities in your substance. So your equivalency is right here. It's basically stated several times. One mole of anything is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So for example, if you had one mole of sodium, that would be equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. And if you had one mole of carbon, that would be equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. If you had one mole of chlorine gas, a diatomic element, that would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of chlorine gas. And that's because here you have a diatomic element, so it's molecules. And we'll come back to this point tomorrow. I don't want to confuse the issue. But one mole of anything is equal to Avogadro's constant. And if it's an element, you'll have atoms. Also important in these equivalencies, you'll see that you've got your quantity, one mole, of some substance, and that's equal to Avogadro's number expressed as a quantity of the same substance. And this concept of one, two, three, number, unit, substance, is going to be critically important, and you'll see that as we set up our problems. All right? Questions at this point? All right, and this is all going to fit into our overall learning goal, which is really to understand what a mole is and how chemists use it. So we're going to do some very simple factor label method problems where we're going to convert from one quantity to another based on this first equivalency that we have established. Now the first two problems are already done for you. I'll walk you through the first, I'll show you how we did the second, and then we'll do the third one together. And there'll be some additional problems in your classwork, which you'll get today. So in the first problem, it says how many atoms of sodium are equivalent to 3.7 moles of sodium. The given is in blue. Again, it's going to be a quantity. You're given 3.7 moles of sodium. What we want to know is atoms of sodium. That's what we're looking for. You're always going to start with your given on the left. So here's your given, 3.7 moles of sodium. In red is what we're looking for, atoms of sodium. This is the same factor label method that we talked about in Chapter 1, and it went with Quiz 1.1. Here's my given, 3.7 moles of sodium. Whatever unit is here, must go in the denominator of my first fraction so that it cancels. If you have moles of sodium here, for this chapter, you'll always have one mole of it. And we know that one mole of anything, in this case sodium, 
is equal to Avogadro's constant, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. So the moles cancel, and then you multiply the two numerators. If you don't have a calculator, there are several on my desk. I also want to remind you exactly how we plug it into the calculator. So you have 3.7 times 6.022. Instead of times 10, what button do we hit? EE or EXP. If you've got the multi view, it's a little more involved. So EE23 equals. Couple things to consider here. If you ever have 10 times, 10 to the 23rd power, make sure when you look at your whole answer, you don't forget what's all the way to the right, because a lot of kids do. Also, in terms of what was given, you were given 3.7 moles. How many sig figs is 3.7? Two. So your answer is going to kick back in two sig figs. 2.2 times 10 to the 24. So make sure you're, going, you're plugging into your calculator properly. You don't want calculator errors. So 3.7 times Avogadro's constant is 2.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium. And again, those cancel. Whenever you have atoms of something, you always have Avogadro's constant with the atoms, and you always have one mole in the other part of the fraction. Note also everything's in threes. Number, unit, substance. Number, unit, substance. Number, unit, substance. That'll be critical. Let's take a look at number two. You have it worked out for you. I'm going to do it on paper so you can see it. It says how many moles of xenon? So that's what we're looking for, moles of xenon. And so that's going to go to the right. That's what we're looking for, moles of xenon. And we're given... 5.66 times 10 to the 26 atoms of xenon. And again, whatever unit and substance I'm given is going to go in the denominator of my first fraction. What number always goes with atoms? Avogadro's constant. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of xenon. Who is it? That allows me to cancel those units. And then what goes in the other part of the fraction? One mole of it. One mole of the substance. Now just be careful, this is like one big fraction. Now if you have the multi-view, you will need parentheses in your denominator. The other calculators do not. Thank you. All right. Guys, can we focus on what we're doing? We've got 5.66 EE26 divided by... 6.022 EE23 equals. They gave us three sig figs. We've got to give them back the same is 940 with the decimal point to maintain that zero as a significant digit. 
940 moles xenon. And again, making sure you can use your calculator is very important. You're going to get a lot of practice with this. Let's do one from scratch so you can talk me through. Yes. Yes, because otherwise you won't have three six. Oh, okay. On number three, it says how many moles of carbon? So is this our given or what we're looking for? has to be what we're looking for because you're not you don't have a number there. So we're looking for moles of carbon and we're given 3.66 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of carbon. If we're given atoms of carbon, what must go in the denominator of that fraction. Got to have atoms of carbon, otherwise it won't cancel. And what number always goes with atoms? Avogadro's constant, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And what always goes in the other part of the fraction? Chris. One mole of carbon, you got it. And now this is very similar to the previous problem. You've got 3.66 EE23 divided by 6.022. Oopsie, you're right. That's why it's a zero before Correct. Leading zeros or losers, they don't count. Uh, in the calculator, 3.66 EE22 divided by 6.022 EE23, thank you, equals, and that was Chris's question because he's looking at sig figs. These zeros before integers are leading zeros. They're not significant digits. Or you could do 6.08 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of carbon if you prefer. Three sig figs, because that's what I was given. Yes, yes? Very basic algebra one based math. All right. So if you have them all and you want to go to Adams, and we've been dealing with atoms here because we just had elements, or you could have molecules, and we'll get into that tomorrow, or particles. If we have ionic compounds, we know that we're going to use Avogadro's constant because one mole of anything is equal to Avogadro's constant. It's not an avocado, it's an avogadro. You eat avocados. And interestingly, avocados are the most caloric fruit. So all that guacamole dip, that must be really, really pound producing. Don't worry, it's no worse than the Fritos, Doritos, and other fabulous snacks that you have in here. It's not good for you. All right. So, in the lab, we use balances. Not scales, but balances. And what unit does the balance give us in the, its reading? Grams. So we're not really going to be playing with this in the lab. We need a way to compare different substances using the mole, but first measuring out 
the mass in grams. And that's the piece we're going to look at. So this is an interesting concept and people will spend weeks on it, but truthfully it's the factor label method. You're all really good at math and this is going to be very simple for you. What's really critical to make sure that you can make solutions by massing out substances is to make sure that you can do a mole to mass or mass to mole conversion. And that introduces the concept known as molar mass. And what this says is with molar mass, it says that one mole of any substance is equal to its mass in grams. But when we used the periodic table previously, we said, oh, well, if we look up carbon, Carbon's atomic mass is 12.011 AMU, atomic mass units. So now we need a way to work grams into it. And this is very, very, very simple. It says, the mass in grams of one mole of an element is numerically equal to the atomic mass of the element, which can be found on the periodic table. So for example, if we consider the atomic mass of carbon, that's 12.011 AMU. But instead of AMU, we want to relate mole to mass now, and we can do this very simply. Instead of AMU for atomic mass unit, we're going to replace this unit with grams per mole. So carbon has a molar mass of 12.011 grams per mole. And what that means as an equivalency, we basically have one mole of the substance, one mole of carbon, is equal to its mass in grams off the periodic table. So one mole of any substance is equal to its mass in grams. So one mole of carbon is equal to 12.011 grams of carbon. Very straightforward. If you add sodium, its atomic mass is 22.99 AMU. Instead of AMU, use grams per mole. Now we're not talking about atomic mass, but rather molar mass. As the equivalency, one mole of the substance, which in this case is sodium, is equal to its mass in grams, 22.990 grams. So one mole of any substance is equal to its mass off the periodic table in grams. And this will allow us to convert from mass to moles. So for example, if we have mass and that's in grams, we can go from mass to moles using the periodic table. And that's what we're going to do here. Because we know that one mole of any substance is equal to its mass in grams. And that's going to be the focus here. All right, so we're going to take a look at a series of examples to set up these problems and solve them. This will be very, very simple for you if you are neat with your setup. I'm trying to move the stool over. Here it goes. All righty. In the first example, it says how many moles of carbon are equivalent to... 22.5 grams of carbon. What's my given? 22.5 grams. And what do I want to know? Moles of carbon. So the given and the unknown setup is what we saw previously. But the, mid, oh, 
<clears throat> excuse me, is going to be different. However, if you have a good understanding of the factor label method, you really can approach these problems the same way each time. I always let my units drive my problem. Grams of carbon is what's given, so grams of carbon must go here. The number that always goes with grams comes from the periodic table, and that's 12.011 grams of carbon. So this number is off the periodic table. And what goes in the other part of the fraction is always one mole of carbon. The grams of carbon will cancel, and now you just do 22.5 divided by 12.011, and that's going to be 1.87 moles. Say it again. Three sig figs is correct, because that's what you were given. Always go based off what you're given here. So we were given grams of carbon. We needed grams of carbon in the denominator so it would cancel. The number we got off the periodic table, and we have one mole of the substance on top. And again, note threes. Number, unit, substance, in every case. I am going to be a little grading dot nightmare if you don't label these things properly. Because in the third nine weeks, you're going to see that these problems are going to have three, four, five, and six steps. And you can go from one substance to a different substance. So if you don't learn how to label properly here, when we get to stoichiometry, it will be very cumbersome for you. So it's critically important that you label thoroughly now. Questions here? The next problem is grossly similar. It says, how many moles of sodium are equivalent to 50.1 grams of sodium? What do we start with? Chris. Chris. Why did you start with that? Because that's the given. And how did you know that was the given? Because it says in the box. How did you recognize it as the given? Oh, it's equivalent. What does this have that the other piece does not have? A number. A number. All right. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what to start with. All right, so you've got the whole quantity there. And what you want to know is moles of sodium. And I know it was obvious to you, Chris. I wasn't picking on you. I just wanted to make sure it was obvious to everybody. All righty, what goes in the denominator of that fraction? Ethan. 23.99 grams of sodium. Yes. So you knew it had to be grams of sodium, and where would you get 22.990 from? You got it. And then what goes on top? One mole of carbon. Good. Oops. See, that's why it's important to label. Otherwise, you do stupid things like that. I'm just testing you. Just testing you. So, of course, it's sodium. Whenever you have moles and grams in the same fraction, you must have the same substance. Cancel, cancel. You've got 50.1 divided by 22.99. Make sure your answer's in the ballpark. You know it's going to be 2 point something. 2.18. Baseball season's over. Too bad. Questions on two? That was somebody's phone. I forgot to turn it off. All right. Three is very similar but slightly twisted. On number three, What's 
my given? Jason. Yep, and what are you looking for? Alrighty. Now, we're given moles and we want mass. What must go in the denominator of the fraction, Pilar? Um, moles of uh, potassium. Yep, and how many moles do you have? Um, um, uh, how many moles are going to go here? Exactly. And what goes on top? On top you would say grams of calcium. And how many grams of calcium are in one mole? 4.48. Perfect. Where'd you get that from? You got it. And then we just multiply, right? 30.1 grams of calcium. I want you guys to try number four. You can do it. Shh. Try number four. It's on the screen. All right, what'd we get? What'd we get? 31.5 grams of neon is correct. Yes, yes? Is that what we're getting? Yes? All right. I'm going to show you number five and then give you your classwork and we'll pick up with this again. But let's work through one more problem just to show you what happens if the mole is not given or asked for. So in number five and also number six, sometimes you're given mass and asked for atoms or given atoms and asked for mass. So if you're not given or asked for the mole, you've got a multi-step process. So in number five, they want to know the mass in grams of strontium, and they want to know when given atoms of strontium, what the equivalent mass is. So in green is what you're given, 3.50 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of strontium. And in yellow is what we're looking for. I'm going to turn my page sideways now because it's going to get very long. All right, so we're given 3.50 times 10 to the 22nd 
atoms of strontium. And we want to know the equivalent amount of mass in grams. Now, if you're not given or asked for moles, it's a multi-step process. But if you let your units drive your problem, you'll be much more successful. So we're given atoms of strontium, so what unit must go in the denominator of my first fraction? Atoms of strontium, good. And what number always goes with atoms? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And what always goes in the other part of the fraction? One mole of it. Now, you have one mole of strontium, so what goes in the denominator of the second fraction? One mole of strontium, and you want to get to grams, and where's that going to come from? And when you look on the periodic table, strontium is 87.62. I would multiply all the numerators, hit equals, and then divide by the denominator. If you have a multi-view, you will need parentheses for your denominator. 3.5 EE22 times 87.62 equals, divided by Avogadro's constant, and I get 5.09 grams. Is that what you got? All right, we will pick up with these multi-step problems next time. I'm going to give you your classwork now. You still have a little time. In regard to your classwork, I need one more minute, please. You can do 1 through 6 and 9 through 11. To truly be successful in this chapter, it's critically important that you do a lot of practice problems. Otherwise, it really is difficult. Chemistry is not a spectator subject, guys. You've got to do. You don't just watch. So do, do, do. These problems need to be done for tomorrow, so when we do the multi-step problems, it's easier for you. We're also going to be looking at equivalencies for compounds, not just elements. And we'll pick up with this tomorrow. Questions? You're good? You've got it? Easy? Good, good. Wait, what's the